Hello and welcome to Tech Deals Game Performance Review Time Grand Theft Auto 5. We're playing Grand Theft Auto 5 today at 4K resolution on a GTX 1080, but wait, not just one of them, two of them in SLI. Yes, that's a lot of video card. The first video we're watching is the non-SLI version. This is set to one card, and then after this I will show you the two card or SLI gameplay. We are at 2160p, Ultra HD 4K resolution, Ultra Detail, every detail setting is turned to the max, and V-Sync is turned off. We are playing today on my custom-built Intel i7-6800K, which has been overclocked to 4.2 GHz. There's 32GB of DDR4 3000MHz RAM, and this is all installed on the ASUS X99-A2 motherboard. Fraps was used for the minimum, maximum, and average game performance that you'll see at the end of this video. Shadowplay was used to record the in-game footage that you are currently watching. Please note that Shadowplay does reduce overall frame performance by between 5-10%. to The reported numbers that you will see in this video are with Shadowplay on, so the actual frame rate numbers you'll see at the end of this video are from the actual video that you're watching right now. If you did not have Shadowplay running, you can add 5-10% to to those numbers. I have not adjusted them in any way. The numbers in red at the top left of the screen are from MSI Afterburner. MSI Afterburner is a program that makes it easy to display real-time information on what the computer and the graphics cards are doing. Briefly, the top four lines are the two graphics cards. Yes, both are actually physically installed, but the second one is disabled. If you look at the first two lines, GPU1 and GPU2, you will notice that GPU1 is at 99% usage. That first percentage is how much of the card's power is currently being used. The second GPU is at 0% because it's not running. It's disabled in the NVIDIA control panel. So we've got 99% usage at 82 degrees Celsius with a fan speed on the graphics card of 1,900 and about 50 RPM at the moment at a clock speed of 1,772 megahertz. The second GPU you can see is off at 53 degrees Celsius, zero RPM fan speed, and of course its clock rate is just at 250. The memory lines, memory 1 and memory 2, are the graphic card memory. This has nothing to do with system RAM, this is the graphics cards themselves. The GTX 1080 has 10 gigahertz GDDR5X RAM. It's actually running at 5. Because it's DDR, you double the data rate, so it's 5 gigahertz doubled to 10. And we are currently using 5.4 gigabytes of the 8 gigabytes of VRAM at 4K at Ultra Detail in this game. You'll notice that the memory 2 line shows very little usage, a uh, very low clock speed, which is the default, and then very little usage because it's disabled. The CPU line is our processor itself. Now this is the Broadwell E 6 core 12 thread processor. So note, when it is 50% busy, it's using all 6 real cores because it has hyper threading, so it has 6 virtual cores. At 25 to 28% usage, we're really using about three of our cores. We are not at all CPU limited in this game. You would be getting basically the same performance in Grand Theft Auto V if you were on an i7-6700K. And frankly, this would do the same thing on an i5-6600K. So we are not needing the extra CPU power here, however, if you're going to spend this much money on graphics cards, why not? It isn't that much more expensive, and we do in fact have $1,300 of the graphics cards in this machine. You can see our CPU temperature is quite cool. It's at 50 degrees Celsius. Our, the RAM line is the main system memory usage. We are at just under 11 gigabytes of, VRAM, of uh, main system RAM being used. There are a handful of things running in the background. This is now my main desktop, so it's not a completely pure test machine. You could probably subtract one or two gigabytes from that. However, in fairness, who is really running a GTX 1080 without at least 16 gigabytes of RAM, which would be plenty for gaming. Finally, we are of course in DirectX 11 mode, which is the last line, and that is our real time frame rate. Now I am recording the frame rate in the background with Fraps. Fraps is not recording the video you're watching, Shadowplay is. 
much less performance impact. But the real time frame rate there, as you can see, not bad. We're at about 60 frames per second at max ultra detail at 4K. That's pretty good. So the question becomes, how well two will two graphics cards work? Not to worry, we'll get there in a minute. Boy, I keep hitting trees, don't I? As I noted earlier in the video, this game is being played on the i7-6800K Broadwell E 6-core high-end enthusiast desktop chip. This is the computer that was built as part of my $4,000 Ultimate Computer Build series. So if you've watched that, yep, that's this computer. Note, don't be uh, discouraged by the $4,000 price tag. Half of that was storage. If you want to play uh, high-end games at high performance and you want one of the best CPUs on the market for that, you don't have to spend that much. You can build this machine for about $2,000 to $2,500 by leaving out a lot of the storage that I put in there. I noted that in those videos. For playing Grand Theft Auto V, you don't need the i7. I've commented this on other videos I've done. An i5 6600K overclocked to 4.2 or even 4.5 gigahertz would produce exactly the same game performance. Look, we're using 22, 25% of our CPU power. We're not even using four cores, so the six doesn't make any difference for this game. Are there exceptions? Yes. Battlefield 1 is one of the newest games that's just come out that actually does use more than four cores, and it is starting to change. I've done numerous videos talking about the benefits of just buying an i5 versus an i7. That might be changing. Um, advice is good at the time it was given, but of course things do change. And I'm starting to move into the an i7 for extreme gaming makes sense. Please note, if you are going to buy two GTX 1080s to game at 4K, that's $1,300 of the graphics cards, don't buy an i5 and don't even buy an i7 6700K, the four core chip. There is no excuse to put these two graphics cards in anything but an i7 6800K. It's about $180 more for this CPU over the 6700 counting the motherboard price difference, worth every penny. Now, moving on to SLI, I'm just showing you the performance. None of this has been changed. I showed it at the beginning, but there was a lot of boxes and talking ahead of it. So I'm just showing you that it's the exact same performance settings, but now we have SLI enabled. Take a look at the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Two interesting points. First of all, both graphics cards are now in use. You can see GPU 1 and GPU 2, both percentages and both temperatures are rising. You will notice that the fan speed of the second card is noticeably lower than the first card. You will also notice that the temperature is much lower. These cards are installed together on the X99-A2 motherboard. Because they're together, there is less airflow to the top card. Its fan is always going to have to run faster, and it's going to run hotter. Please note that the X99-A2 motherboard does offer a single open slot between the cards, so they are not directly next to each other. So you're going to want a, a two-slot high bandwidth SLI bridge in order to put these cards together. But there is a little bit of airflow in there, but not as much as I would like. Take a look at the VRAM. Memory 1 and Memory 2. Now, this may simply be a reporting bug in MSI Afterburner. It might be something to do with NVIDIA's new drivers. Notice that it does report both cards are at 5 GHz VRAM clock speed, but it shows zero uh, megabytes actually being used. Well, clearly that's not going to be true. Why does it show that? Maybe it's a bug. I can't tell you. I played around with it. I've tr actually tried running it twice. I rebooted the machine it still came up as zero megabytes, so go figure. The CPU usage is a little bit higher now. Um, we're up to 40% usage. I don't recall it ever hitting 40% in the previous run. As you add more graphics performance in the form of two graphics cards, you need more CPU performance. It does make a difference. But then again, as I said before, if you're installing $1,300 of the graphics cards, seriously, don't go with anything less than an i7-6800K. For the $180 more it will cost you over uh, Skylake's i7, the 6700, it, it's a no-brainer. That makes absolutely no sense to do anything less than that. Our main system RAM is about the same use as it was before, just over 10 gigabytes. But take a look at our, our frame rate. 
DirectX 11, 106, 110 frames per second. What a difference. I do think it's worth talking about the difference between pure frame rate and playability. Is Grand Theft Auto V fully playable at 4K resolution at ultra detail on a single GTX 1080? Yes, you saw it earlier. There are moments where it slows down. Now, I played more of this uh, for, than you're just watching here. This is trimmed down footage. I actually played for about an hour, uh, about half an hour with it on, half an hour with it off, trying various things. I drove into the countryside. The grass at ultra detail in the countryside really kills performance. So you might want to turn grass down a notch or two if you're only running with one card. But even on two cards, uh, the grass really kills the performance. Driving around in the city is actually much, much faster. If you have a single 1080 and you want to play at 4K resolution, yes, that'll work great. I don't have any problem with a single GTX 1080 being used at 4K, but I would turn the ultras off. I would go to very high detail across the board. It will improve the minimum frame rate and improve the overall smoothness. And smoothness and responsiveness is something that a pure FPS number does not reflect, which is why I'm doing a live game video and not the pre-recorded benchmark. I really don't like pre-recorded benchmarks. The problem with them is they don't necessarily reflect how well the game plays and it doesn't show you what to really expect. Now, randomly driving around and causing a, a mess with the police doesn't always reflect the game either, but at least it's actually playing the game rather than just doing a pre-recorded benchmark. Now, please note, SLI does not work on every game. I will do upcoming game performance videos where I show that. But if you're thinking you'll just buy two cards, put them in SLI, and this will solve all your performance issues, I'm sorry, but it just doesn't work that way. One of the questions that's going to be asked is, why don't you just buy two GTX 1070s in SLI those? When you see the performance numbers, that'll make sense. Yes, you could. And in this situation, that actually would work just fine. However, if you are going to game at 4K resolution, which is the only reason to buy two GTX 1080s and SLI them, the problem you run into is in games that don't have good SLI support, you're going to be forced to run on a single card. If you only have a 1070, you're going to be severely performance limited trying to play on one card at 4K resolution. Now, if you're okay to scale it back to 1440p in games that don't support SLI, all right, SLI a pair of 1070s. The 1070 has eight gigabytes of VRAM and it costs a lot less than the 1080 does. You can now find 1070s for under $400. So for about $800, you can get a pair of 1070s versus $1,300 for a pair of 1080s. That was not true when the cards launched, by the way, which is why I have a pair of 1080s because at the time of launch, well, what can I say? This made sense. And I do want a game at 4K. Now I'm going to trim this video here. I'm showing you a little bit less of this one. We're gonna go take a look at the results now. And here are the results. On a single GTX 1080, we have an average of 60 frames per second, a minimum of 48 and a max of 67. But when we turn both cards on, the average rises to 97. We have a minimum of 69 and a max of 120. That is a 61% increase in the average, a 44% increase in the minimum, and a 79% increase in the maximum. That is a fairly decent across-the-board performance increase of more than 50%. I will note that it totally depends upon where you're at in the game. I did trim out and ran a second Fraps run on the two SLI cards. My first run I ended up out in the wilderness and with all the grass, it severely hit the performance. So I did another one to show you and that's what you watched right there to try and make them in the city as similar as I could. Allow me to remind you that you can add five to 10% to these numbers because they are with shadow play recorded. I have not adjusted these numbers in any way. So both sets of numbers will be slightly higher with shadow play off. Having said that, if you want perfect smooth performance at 4K at ultra detail, it does take two of these, or possibly a pair of 1070s. There will be games where SLI doesn't work, and as I said, I'll have those upcoming in a future video. 
Like this video if you like it. Don't if you don't remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button down below. Leave your questions and comments below the video. And as always, use the links in my video description below. Links to buy Grand Theft Auto 5. Links to buy all the various hardware that you see in this video. Amazon, Newegg, and eBay are down there. Please use those links if you like my videos so I can be here to make you more videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.